Hello everyone and welcome to Coding for Kids by Kids. I'm Joshua and I'm going to help you so we can do this thing. But first we're going to first we're going to watch the video. Voyage Aquatic. I'm about to embark on a quest to find hidden underwater treasure and I'm very glad to have your help. Who knows what we'll encounter along these mysterious waterways. We're meant to meet our first guide somewhere on this dock. Welcome adventurers. To complete the Voyage Aquatic, you'll need to solve a series of puzzles using code. Here's how it works. Your screen is split into three main parts. On the left, you'll see the Minecraft world. The middle area is your toolbox, where you can find coding commands. And on the large area on the right is your workspace. This is where you can start commands to build your program and control your movements. The instructions for each level are at the top of the page. Click the plus sign to change between long and short instructions. Try dragging blocks from the toolbox into the workspace, stacking them and then click the run button to execute your commands. You might have to try a few times to get it right, and some of the puzzles have more than one solution, so experiment to see what works. If you want to try again, click the reset button to go back where you started. If you need to delete a command, just drag the block from your workspace back into the toolbox. Remember, click run to see what your code looks like in action. Okay, enough messing around, fellow adventurer. Let's start coding to find some underwater treasure. Okay. So here it is, we need to collect the boat from the chest. And as you can see, we can only afford one. So we're going to have to put in another new board. And we're going to set it on one again. Okay, so here. Well, we'll have to move forward and turn right so we are facing the way where the boat is. Then we can move forward two times to get to the end of the dock. Okay, here we're going to have to move forward, hmm, like, let's say seven times, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, so we can go get the cord, so, forward, move forward, move forward, move forward, move forward, and another move forward. Wait, now I'm going to watch this video. Great, we've caught a codfish. Did you know if you feed a codfish to a dolphin, the dolphin will guide you to a shipwreck where there may be treasure. We must be getting closer. The next set of puzzles are bound to be trickier, so we better learn some more coding skills. What's this? A cave? Welcome, adventurers. My name is Squid. I noticed you were using the same set of commands over and over in some of the last puzzles. Must have been a bit tiresome. Do you ever wish you had a way to do something over and over again? Like, you know, washing dishes or brushing your teeth without getting tired or bored? <laughs> that would be nice. Computers are really good at doing the same thing over and over again, using coding loops. When you want your program to do the same instructions many times, you can use a loop. The loop contains instructions with the command to repeat untold goal. Once your program starts a repeat untold goal loop, it will keep running the instructions inside until it gets to the goal. Try this for yourself. Place the commands you want to repeat inside the repeat untold goal block. Click run and watch it go. Well, that was a little weird. Who knew squids could code? I didn't even think they had fingers. So now we know about loops, let's use them to bag us some more treasure. 
So now we can move on. So we're going to have to get to the dolphin, and as you can see, it's a straight line. So instead of doing move forward, move forward, move forward, we can just use our feet on your goal, and the goal is to get the get to the dolphin. Okay, so here we just need to add one block. But if it's moving forward, move forward. But we could have the turn right in front of it so it could turn right correctly. So of that, it's going to move forward here again. Then it's going to move forward here. Then do a turn right to get to the chest. Okay, now we have, have some what, repeat blocks. We could either also get to the turtle or we could get to the salmon. We could get to the turtle and salmon, but then we could you know, just get to the turtle. So I'm going to put the repeat until go there. Do a turn right. Repeat three times, move forward. Turn left, repeat three times, move forward. And that should be it, since you'll go like this. And it was also get to the seven. And we can now Ooh, watch this video. Wow, another three puzzle solved. And we've caught a salmon. Not quite as exciting as piles of gold, but we'll take what we can get. And I have a feeling that Nautilus shell will come in handy later. I wonder what lurks in these ruins. Perhaps another hint. Let's take a look inside. My name is Nettie, and welcome to my ruins. We make decisions all the time based on conditions. If it looks like rain, then we'll grab an umbrella. If we're hungry, then we'll eat a snack. If we see a creeper, then we run in the opposite direction. Computers make these types of decisions too. They can actually respond to conditions using code. To program a response like this using your code command, select an if path block. Select the drop down to create the command. For example, if you write the command if path to the right and place turn right inside the condition, then when Steve reaches an open path to the right, he will always turn right. If there's no opening to the right, he will not turn right. These conditional if commands are helpful when you run code in other situations, such as mysterious ruins and underwater caves. Try using the if blocks and take your code for a spin. Wow, Natty's ruins were awesome. I really got to move out of my parents' house. So what do you think? Are the conditions right for us to complete the final puzzles? Let's give it a go. Okay, so now we can move on. Okay, so here we could do four and one. I'm going to also try and get to the turtle as well to the chest. So I'm going to... After left, turn left. Then you'll see what happens when you're on your chest. It turns out we we'll also need an F path to the right, turn right. But we're putting it before it so it doesn't just keep on going since it isn't detecting that first. It turns out. Yeah, doesn't actually do. We'll just move on and zoom somewhere.
now we're going to continue. Okay, here, it's basically like we have to go around the square. So, we're going to go through all these until we've got. Okay, but if I, I think if I do a turn right, first of all, let me just check. So, I can do a move forward, give path to the left, that to drop. Actually, let's just do this fast one. Yeah, we can. We can continue on. So here, again, it's this was standing on a certain piece of coral. So it says if standing on blue coral, but as you can see, most of the blue coral make it turn right. So I can also do. If standing on red coal, it could make you turn left. But there's also a real thanks for extra, so I'm, I'm actually going to put that in. Right. I just need to see how it's going to be. And it's going to be a turn left. to put the move forward in there. Mm. It looks like they were going to be Now we can continue. Okay, now this one is going to be if we're standing on the sea landing. But we can also do the blue call and the red call if we want to get the turtle. And we can do that. But I'm not going to get the turtle this time. So I'm just going to do a move forward. Just standing on sea land and then turn right. Now we can move on to the final level. So for this one, we're going to have to place with Marine over every single block there. So we can do the D and the conduit completed because we're building a conduit. So we can do a B one, two, three, four times. We can do a repeat four times, move forward, place with marine. Then we can turn right.
That's all we're doing today, and I'll see you all later. Bye!